Hey everyone and welcome to Witch Ways. I'm Colette and today I just want to talk about working with the ancestors since it's getting to that bottom half of the year if you're watching in real time and I hope you enjoy. I wanted to let you know that I'm running a Patreon special for the next couple months in honor of Samhain and I'll put details in the description. So today I'm going to go over who the ancestors are, what their jobs are, what they bring to magic, what they need in return, and a lot of the common questions that come up. So my answer for whether you should work with them or not is that it depends on lots of different things. For myself, the answer is definitely yes, but that's a personal choice that everyone needs to make. And that's not gonna be right for everyone. And if you do not want to, you absolutely do not have to work with them. You do not have to work with blood ancestors. There are a lot of different types of ancestors, and I'm gonna talk more about that later. You can work with your ancestors of your adopted family if they were good to you and you like them and that happens to be the case for you. In some earlier European cultures, often fostering was seen as merging family lines. I also get asked, what if my family was really problematic? And there are a lot of ways that you can approach that. You can skip back a few generations if you have someone that you know of that you feel like was a good person. You can go way, way back and find someone through trance or divination. And you can work with different type of ancestors that are not blood related to you at all. More on that later. You can also direct your magic and call only on the whole and healthy ancestors. If you don't know who very many of your ancestors are, I'm gonna talk about that towards the end of the video. But a simple way to address that is to just invite again, the whole and healthy ancestors, known and unknown when you call them into your circle. You can also just call the whole and healthy ancestors of your lineage if you don't know any of them at all. So I talked about working with your blood ancestors or your adoptive ancestors, known and unknown, but you can also call them in by geographical area. And that might look like saying something like, I call and honor the whole and healthy ancestors from my background from the land of blank, and then fill in that blank. Another type of ancestor are the cultural ancestors. And these are ancestors who do the kind of work that we do or are in some ways related to who we are in life. That might look like calling on the witches, the queer ancestors, the trans ancestors, the musicians, the artists, the poets, anything that relates to who you are in this life and what you do. I also honor the ancestors who weren't homo sapiens, who left their unique gifts in my body and in my mind. And I honor those ancestors who were actually pre-human, like the rocks, the trees, the mountains, the animals. And they are literally what make up our body in addition to being related to us through DNA. I also talked in a recent video of fall moon magic about creating a list of people who aren't related to you at all, but who have passed over who inspired you, that work for things that you value. And I talked about creating a ritual for that during October's full moon, and I'll put a link for that video in the description. You know, you can also call on ancestors from a certain period in time, like a migratory period, when your ancestors were moving from one area to another, like when my ancestors moved out of Africa, or when humans started moving onto the northern continents as the ice age ended and that might be really helpful if you are moving yourself for better opportunities you might want to call on them ancestors have a lot of different magical jobs but i feel like their main job is to support their descendants physical and emotional well-being when they were alive, what they did was work hard to support, nourish, and make sure that their children survived. 
and hopefully did better than they were doing. And you need to remember when I'm saying this that I am not talking about just any old ancestor or the sociopath. I am talking about the whole and healthy ancestors. So in practical terms, what that means is that you can call on them for abundance and prosperity work, health and healing work, and general emotional well-being. And again, we're not talking about the sociopathic ancestors here. You can call on the pre-Christian ancestors to support you in understanding magic and getting better at it. You can ask them to give you dreams or intuitive visions if you have that skill and ability to tell you about magic that may have been forgotten. And if you're trying to succeed in a certain endeavor, you can call on ancestors who may have done that kind of work. For example, if you're a musician, you can call on the whole and healthy ancestors who are known and unknown who were musicians. And I just wanted to add here that because modern culture has been so interrupted by Christianity and is so dysfunctional, we are one of the few cultures in the world that does not honor our ancestors in some way. For example, in many African traditional religions like Santeria and Houdoun, the magic is all about the ancestors in some ways. And in some Asian countries, when you enter someone else's house, it's traditional to greet the ancestors at the ancestor altar before you do anything else. In some traditions, the oldest known ancestor is considered a god, or maybe all the people of that culture see themselves as descended from a specific god. And even in modern times, I have seen lineage charts of Nordic and Germanic peoples that elaborately trace their ancestors back to Thor or Odin or some other deity. Calling the ancestors into your magic can be simple or very elaborate. And the easiest way to do that is to just invite the whole and healthy ancestors in when you first start your ritual or your piece of magic. I always add the caveat of including a phrase like, those ancestors or spirits who have my best interests at heart and then I just ask them to support me in the work that I do in the spell or the ritual that I'm about to perform. You know, the type of magic that almost all ancestors will help with is a good abundance spell. If you have a favorite one, just call them in at the beginning. If you don't, there are a lot of them out there. And I created a prosperity spell a few weeks back, and I'll link that in the description. But you can also look back through folklore and historical books about folk magic in the region that you're from, if you know it. For my ancestors, what abundance magic looked like was chants, spells, prayers, rituals, for an abundant harvest for grain and animals. There was a lot of collecting of folklore and folk magic in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And I've learned a lot from reading those. And mostly what I've learned is everything is heavily Christianized and I have to adapt those spells, chants, and prayers if I want to work with them. Another thing that you can do with the ancestors is to ask your very early ancestors for a dream about what magical practices might have existed prior to Christianity before you go to sleep. Again, I would ask the pre-Christian ancestors who have your best interest at heart and make an offering to them before you start this. I think that it's probably easiest to ask them for information around some of the major holidays like Midsummer or Yule or Samhain or whatever major holidays that your ancestors might have celebrated from the region that you are from. Then you can also ask your ancestors to help you daydream or imagine it and see if some useful information comes to you. You can do either, ask for a dream or do a daydream. 
I like to keep things reciprocal. So what do the ancestors need from us? First of all, they just like to be remembered. And that can look like creating an altar to them with some pictures if you have any, or maybe pictures or maps of the land they came from. You can also find their names, research them, make a list of them and read them out, especially at the bottom half of the year, telling stories about them, or doing that specifically at Samhain. I'm gonna do a whole video on Samhain. And I will link in the description a practice that I do daily that's really easy and simple. I made a video about it in August, and you can check that out if you want a daily practice that you can do also weekly or monthly, whatever feels right to you. You can also create a piece of art for them. I have a few incense blends that I make that I burn when I honor my ancestors, and one that I really like contains cinnamon or sweetness, mugwort for divination, rosemary for remembrance and protection, and marjoram for honoring the ancestors and the dead. And again, you really don't have to honor those who were problematic in any way if you don't want to. In modern witchcraft, we usually just work with the ancestors at Samhain. In other cultures, that is not true. They work with them all the time. And I work with mine year round. But you can also choose to just honor them at Samhain or honor them at the bottom of the wheel of the year if you want when we're more inward. I think the real key to having a good relationship with them is to frequently honor them and offer them things that they might like. And I do that regularly. At Samhain, I try to read the names of my ancestors at least once. I might also include regions that they were from, like Africa, where life emerged for my particular ancestors, and it's totally possible to honor your ancestors without knowing their names, but a little bit of research might be helpful. If you're calling on ancestors of culture, like queer ancestors, you can do a quick online research to find some names of famous ones and then call on them if they passed over. If you're calling on blood ancestors or foster ancestors, but you don't know specific names, you can try Googling the last names that you do know and seeing what areas those last names come from and then do a little research about those areas finding the ways they live, finding a little bit about them, what kind of foods they ate. And if you're lucky, you might even find some folk magic from that region. You could also do a DNA test. They're not super accurate for a whole bunch of reasons that I won't go into here. But if you have a super high percentage of DNA from one region, that's usually pretty good and you can bet on that. You can do traditional research online, with paper trails, following birth records, death records, census records. And this can be really difficult because often genealogy is heavily geared towards white European backgrounds. Although that's slowly starting to change, but it's not there yet. It might also be difficult if your ancestors experienced a mass genocide or a mass diaspora, but you never know what you're going to find, good or bad, so be prepared. As the ancient Greek poet Sappho once said, if you're squeamish, don't prod the beach rubble. If you're more advanced and have the skills, you can take yourself on a daydream visualization or an actual trance journey and just see yourself moving up the path of your DNA back through time and stopping every once in a while just to see what ancestors might present themselves and who is there. So I would love to hear in the comments if you work with ancestors, if you have special ways of honoring them, do you work with them just at Samhain or do you work with them year round? Also, I'm really excited to share a special discount for my Patreon page just in time for the Samhain workshops and articles that are going to appear. And I'll put all the details in the description below and check that out if you feel like it. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe and be 